There's one final note about vectors that's, that's a useful thing and that we'll use occasionally. And that is sometimes you're actually given a different kind of information about vectors. Instead of being given x, y, and z, you're sometimes just given some angles. So let's work in two dimensions because it's easier to draw here. So here's an x-axis. Here's a y-axis. Suppose we have some vector a here. And you're told that it's, it's 4 meters long and that this angle is 20 degrees. How do we write the real vector out? Well, basically what we need to do is we need to use this information about angles to get a unit vector. And then we can say A is going to be equal to 4 meters times A hat. So how do we get a unit vector from angles? It's actually quite easy. You only have to remember one trig function. It's a cosine. And what you do is we write a hat, the unit vector, as the cosine of the x component is the cosine of what we call theta sub x. What's theta sub x? It's this angle. Suppose you start with a unit vector 1, 0, 0. That's a special unit vector, isn't it? It's just along the x-axis. The angle you have to rotate it through to get to A, that's theta sub x. So in this case, we've got cosine of 20 degrees. OK, what's the y component? Well, the y component, you start with a vector, unit vector here. 0, 1, 0. These are unit vectors we can find by inspection, right? Any unit vector pointing along an axis just has one non-zero component. That's a 1, so we can find that by inspection. What angle do we have to rotate that through to get to this? Well, what's this angle? 70 degrees. So that's cosine 70 degrees, or generally cosine theta sub y. OK, now we start with a unit vector along the positive z-axis. So that's our unit vector, 0, 0, 1. What's the angle we have to rotate that through to get to our vector a? OK, is it 0 or is it 90? It's 90, isn't it? We have to rotate it. This is a right angle, because this is in the plane. This is perpendicular to the plane. So therefore, this is a 90 degree angle. So we have cosine 90 degrees, or more generally, cosine theta sub z. And this is going to give us our unit vector a hat. These angles are always less than or equal to 180 degrees. They're always positive. OK, then let's see if you can calculate one. OK, uh, you don't really have to do any calculating here. You just have to think about it. So here, let me turn the light down on the screen so you can think about it for a minute. Here's a vector, <coughs> cyan arrow pointing off here. We want to get a unit vector in the direction of that cyan arrow. We're going to get the components this way. So the first question is, in this case, what is this angle theta sub x? I'm not asking you to evaluate it. I'm just asking you what the angle is. OK, so we'll let people who have clickers use clickers. The rest of us will vote. 
So, thought about it? I didn't hear you talk to your neighbor. Okay, you ready? Okay, who says it's 30 degrees? Who says it's 60 degrees? Who says it's 120 degrees? Who says it's 150 degrees? Who thinks it's not one of those things? Okay, you're right on it. It's We had to rotate the vector 100 through 90 plus 30, 120 degrees to get there. Okay, what's the angle theta sub y? We won't we won't even do this as a as a clicker question, but what is well okay, let's do it. We want theta sub y. Okay, that's the that we're gonna get this y component here. So what is that angle theta sub y? Thirty degrees? Okay, sixty degrees. 120 degrees, 150 degrees. Okay, everyone who didn't raise their hand, it's something else. <laughs> well, if you're being noncommittal, that's not good. Okay, we start with the vector 0, 1, 0. We rotate it through 30 degrees. You get there. Okay. So that's the basic idea. 